different countries. I know that in some countries, for example, in US, they are not widely used uh, today, but maybe someday. Uh, so, uh, I will be talking about security of this authorization mechanism, but one remark, I will be not uh, presenting, this presentation is not about how great those solutions are, but I will rather speak about implementation and integration um, errors which could cause these shiny safeguards to fail. Uh, and of course it will be vulnerability shooting because it's the best way and easiest way to deliver uh, IT security presentation. But I will uh, make it a little bit trickier for me and also will try to provide some kind of rec recommendations uh, how to avoid those uh, errors. So first let me introduce myself. I am OWASP Poland chapter leader and uh, I am also a managing partner at securing a Polish company providing uh, penetration testing and application security consultancy. And uh, my company was founded 12, 12 years ago and since that time uh, uh, we, uh, we were doing penetration testing of m I think more than 50 different electronic banking, mobile banking uh, solutions with different kind of uh, authorization mechanisms. Uh, so I have decided to review results of those tests and summarize uh, most common implementation uh, errors and give advice how to avoid these security uh, defects. So first, uh, why ha I have uh, chosen this uh, topic? Uh, for internet banking, common threats are malware, uh, password hijacking, session hijacking. Uh, and common risk, of course, is uh, wire transfer frauds. So banks are implementing sec some kind of second factors, uh, second factor devices, uh, SMSs, etc., uh, to authorize transactions to lower the risk. But the problem is, of course, that sometimes implementation of this mechanism is far from being uh, perfect. Uh, so how it look, look like? Uh, this is example from one of Polish uh, internet banking systems and probably it's similar to your internet banking in your countries. So first, user has to uh, enter transaction uh, details on the usual first screen and uh, click uh, confirm the transfer. And then a uh, system sent uh, to, to the user uh, SMS message with transaction data user has to validate those transaction data if it is same as provided by, by him. Uh, and he has to rewrite this uh, SMS code uh, into the web form and click sign. So this is the transaction authorization mechanism commonly used in Poland for retail uh, banking SMS code. The other example, I know it's uh, um, often used in, uh, in UK uh, and also probably in Netherlands. Uh, it is an uh, unconnected card reader, external device with a separate pin pad uh, and uh, user has to enter into the uh, device first card, second uh, he has to enter uh, some digits from target account number and uh, this device produces the um, response which should be put into the web form and the transaction is authorized. So this is how it uh, looks like. Uh, and of course, we have uh, many, many different uh, operation authorization methods like uh, TAN cards with uh, transaction authorization codes which, which should be scratched by user. Uh, next, we have a, a one-time uh, one password or uh, OTP time-based time -based, uh, tokens like RSA Secure IDs. Uh, we have also uh, unconnected or card readers with uh, external pin pad. Uh, we, ha we have SMS codes, of course, we have uh, phone back functionality that bank, is, uh, bank system is phoning back to user to authorize transaction. Uh, next, I have seen also, of course, uh, mobile applications, which are the form of these tokens, but inside the mobile applications. We have seen al also some kind of uh, devices connected to computer, like card readers uh, or card readers inform just a 
some kind of uh, other USB devices connected with application by some kind of uh, Java control or ActiveX control. Uh, then we have a, a connected and unconnected uh, card readers and uh, some mod modern solutions which uh, allows user to scan some kind of some kind of barcode on the uh, screen to enter the transaction in the to device and uh, also special form of dot matrix which is scanned by a device camera etc it's called chrontosign i think and it's probably used by one bank i think in in netherlands yes maybe a number <sighs> so uh, what kind of transaction authorization is commonly used in your countries anyone <laughs> sms codes Uh-huh. So card readers and connected one with a pin pad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's probably the most two common methods. But uh, I will speak rather about implementation errors. The problem is that those, all those ideas are great, but implementation could fail. Uh, this uh, image on the left is the uh, project of skyscraper in Krakow, in my home city in Poland, uh, which was designed in the 70s, and this is the reality. Uh, unfortunately, due to construction problems uh, and funding, building was never finished and now serves as the biggest uh, billboard in the city. <laughs> So if you came to Krakow, you uh, surely uh, noticed on the skyline this big building. Well, uh, so ideas are great, implementation failed, and this is true also for software, uh, opera uh, for software including operation authorization and internet banking. Yes. So let's move on to vulnerability examples. Uh, uh, first, it will be easy one. <laughs> so. Uh, let's use uh, SMS calls as an uh, example of payment authorization. And uh, what's wrong with this? Anyone? I have some rewards. <laughs> so uh, let's think. What's wrong with this? Uh, leading question. What, what if malware will change recipient's account? Exactly. Rewards for you. <laughs> this is a small uh, board game uh, called Cryptos, so it has to be something with cryptography, probably. <laughs> Unfortunately, I, I, I only did two of them. So. Uh, yes. <laughs> Uh, the problem is that user is not able to verify uh, recipient's account number. So if malware can change it, uh, so malware can change it, and user will not notice. Yes. Um, and uh, unfortunately, also solution like uh, one-time password, time-based like Secure ID, is not best choice for transaction authorization because user is not able to validate the transaction because the device is not providing the uh, transaction details. Yes, but it's still commonly used uh, not only as uh, uh, authentication device but also uh, as an uh, authorization device. So vulnerability is just the user don't know actually what he's signing and uh, good practice is that transaction authorization methods sh should allow uh, users to verify significant trans transaction data such as uh, target account and amount. So let's move on to the uh, second, uh, second example, example uh, from my um, practice. Uh, Let's consider the application which, uh, which, are using again, which is using, again, uh, SMS codes for transaction authorization. And uh, this, uh, this application also allows user, uh, users to change uh, their uh, phone number. So on the first form, user has to enter a new phone number and confirm this uh, new phone number to not be mistaken. And on the second screen, user has to enter authorization code, send to new number. 
<laughs> uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, this is the real one from real application. <laughs> so, example just of, of bad thinking, yes, about or not thinking about security. Uh, I hope I, I should not explain what is wrong with this. Uh, yeah. The Dutch banks have a mitigation factor that's really bad for privacy. Um, when you enter in your phone number, they check the uh, IMI, IMEI database and they get uh, names and addresses from anybody, oh, yeah. their customers, and they check if it's plausible that it's you. Huh. So if it's, if it's registered to a different person, or if it's been registered less than 24 hours yeah. before, or any thing that could indicate it could be a fraudulent transaction, that's what they do, so it's... Yeah, it, would be, it could be a clash between security and privacy in this case, but probably you have accepted terms and conditions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. Uh, well, uh, Generally, uh, changing authorization credentials or authorization methods, of course, should require authorization itself using current authorization credentials and current authorization methods. So this SMS should be sent to the current uh, number, not to the new number, of course. Uh, but uh, some other, other examples of operations uh, which should be authorized. Uh, for example, uh, we have seen predefined predefine transfer template, which uh, could be changed uh, without ad additional authorization. So the transactions should be authorized, but uh, template change is not authorized, so it's the hole in the system, yes? Or, for example, we have seen uh, deposit termination, and this uh, form allows users to choose target account. In this application, in this case, uh, we have also found find the access control problem, specific one that user uh, could, uh, could choose not only his account number, for transaction termination as a target account, but only uh, also other. So this method, without transaction, additional uh, transaction authorization, could be used to uh, to do fraud using malware. Yes, to bypass whole the uh, whole, whole system. So rec uh, w what are recommendations? Generally, any significant operation should enforce authorization. Uh, and especially change of authorization credentials should be authorized using current authorization credentials. So uh, let's move on to the more complicated examples. Uh, and uh, again, it, this picture is an example of a uh, good idea, cash machine, but bad implementation. <laughs> Oh, great. I like your way of thinking. <laughs> Positive. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, again, internet banking application, user enters transaction data, and transaction data is uh, being sent to the server using post methods, just common one. Uh, so, what we have here? We have a recipient account number, yeah, this big one. We have amount and we have uh, currency and transaction title. Yes, this is step one, one form when the user enters and sends transaction data. Next, user enters authorization data. So between two steps, uh, user received SMS message, or the user have to enter the challenge into the device and uh, put, put back uh, the response or SMS code into the web form. He clicks sign and uh, and uh, data is being sent, so task is sent response, just some kind of verb for, uh, verb for, uh, for uh, uh, strats or spring or something like that, uh, some kind of framework. And uh, there is an authorization code for this transaction entered by user literally into, into the application. And uh, we found following vulnerability. Uh, that it is possible in this second step to attach transaction data as in step one and effectively overwrite authorization transaction. So we use additional parameters in post request taken from the first step in the second step and uh, 
flow flow was uh, application flow was bad and system was authorizing first transaction but executes second one yes uh, just just an example of lo logical vulnerability in application yes so wh what are recommendation Rec recommendation for me is quite simple generally any modification of this transaction data should trigger uh, reset of authorization process and invalidation of previous authorization credentials this is the safeguard okay next, next example of bad implementation of good ideas uh, let's consider following transaction uh, signing flow uh, using uh, SMS codes because this is most common example for me so uh, user is uh, we have here uh, some kind of protocol between user server and phone yes so far you first at first step user enters transaction data but server responds with uh, some kind of uh, text which is uh, data to sign and this uh, uh, this response uh, this response is um, transaction data encoded in the form of a string plus some kind of uh, challenge uh, added to this uh, to this response uh, and at this stage user is seeing a confirmation page with transaction data and she can uh, check if entered uh, data are okay and decide if she wants to authorize these uh, transactions and she clicks uh, okay if so uh, server sends her sms code yes uh, and user entered, entered the, enters the, this SMS code into the uh, web form and uh, JavaScript uh, JavaScript uh, um, signs this uh, transaction using uh, uh, in this case SHA1 uh, uh, from uh, this text this challenge sent, sent by server and uh, SMS code uh, server can verify this uh, this signature and sends confirmation that everything went okay yes hope it's understood uh, so how we tried to attack this process process so user enters data server response with uh, text to sign user uh, confirms the transaction that every that entered data are okay uh, and uh, system sends her uh, sms code so we tried to at this step uh, when user has to enter sms code uh, there is th there was a small time window when we uh, could reply first code and effectively overwrite the transaction uh, details so we entered the code server responds uh, with uh, some data to sign and uh, we, we are waiting for user to enter SMS code yes uh, user enters SMS code and uh, malware or attacker should uh, just count uh, SHA1 from this new text and with old SMS code and everything went okay and transaction was confirmed so this this kind of errors are unfortunately quite common because uh, because of implementation errors and because of bad programming so again um, any modification of transaction data should trigger a rest out or reset of uh, whole authorization process and application also should control flow should control should control should control uh, which transaction state transitions are allowed so uh, in this case we were we should be not allowed to go from this step when user enters sms code back to step one yes it could be controlled but sometimes it's it's not so another example of uh, bad implementation uh, previous examples were vulnerabilities which could be used by by malware but we actually haven't have any evidence that such such as uh, uh, problem are used by actively by 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 malware uh, but next examples are real case uh, malware scenarios which uh, abuse transaction authorization uh, <coughs> mechanisms and bypassed it so first one uh, um, it was quite specific system because uh, user was uh, 
authorize uh, or authenticate us rather uh, using static password, yes, password, and uh, challenge response token, external device with a pin pad. And uh, for authentication, user has to enter uh, this ID, which is a challenge sent by server, into the device and enter the response from device into the web form for uh, just for login. Yeah, for authentication. And unfortunately, exactly same method, uh, exactly same method, entering the challenge from application into the device and response back, uh, was used to authorize transfers. So, any idea what malware did? Excuse me? Exactly. Reward for you. <laughs> So, uh, what, what malware did is that uh, malware needs two responses for given uh, IDs, for given uh, challenges. Uh, so, first response is from this form and is used by malware to uh, authenticate uh, attacker, at authenticate malware in the, uh, in, in the internet banking. And at these steps, step uh, user. Uh, Malware shows wrong authentication error and tricks user to enter another response. And this another response is effectively used to, uh, to do the transfer, money transfer from bank, bank account. Uh, so what I could recommend. First, transaction authorization method uh, should allow user to verify transaction data. This method is not allowing user to verify any transaction data, it's just, uh, just the numbers. Uh, and uh, second, I think that different methods should be used for user authentication and transaction authorization to, uh, because users have to uh, recognize wh what, what he's doing. Or at least users should be able to easily distinguish be between the authentication and authorization, what he's doing. Yes. And uh, last example, again, uh, malware <laughs> and uh, bad, bad implementation. Uh, it is a little bit more complicated. So, in this system, in this very system, uh, for user authorization for, and for transaction authentication was used an external card reader, but connected to the computer and without the key, uh, keypad, because it's the uh, cheapest one, probably, yes? Uh, user has to, for, for uh, login, or for, for authentication, user has to uh, insert his card uh, into the device, and uh, authorize the, the operation using pin entered into the ActiveX control. So user is logged in. And next, when uh, operation is authorized, uh, user again has to enter pin into ActiveX control. Yes. And uh, also at this step, we can see other quite common error in ActiveX control that here, here we have ActiveX control, but in ActiveX we don't have an opportunity to easily see transaction details. It is in Polish, uh, but this small uh, small triangle Rosvin mean, means unwrap the transaction details. So it's bad, bad UX also. Uh, yeah, and do you have any idea how malware can be used uh, in this case to create fraud transfer f without user knowledge? I don't, I don't have a reward, so I will tell myself. <laughs> uh, yeah. It was just a simple sniffer. Uh, I think this functionality was implemented using uh, Tinba uh, malware, Tinba family. Uh, and uh, it was just, from, from technical perspective, it was, it was just a simple sniffer, which sniffs uh, user pin and automate logon plus transfer. But in real life, it was rather external operator, uh, which uh, uh, which used uh, some kind of monitoring to check if user is not doing doing anything and uh, go, went for lunch, for example, uh, leaving the card in, inside the reader, and then then th he used some kind of remote desktop implemented in this Tinba malware, 
to log in into the computer and to use the sniffed pin first to uh, enter the banking system to authenticate user and next to do any kind of transactions. Simple. <laughs> Simple by, but beautiful. <laughs> Uh, and very effective in this case because we have uh, th this system is uh, quite unfortunately quite commonly used in Polish banks uh, for, for commercial institutions and uh, uh, there, there was last year a, a lot big malware campaign against this uh, kind of transaction authorization. So recommendations. Uh, recommendation is quite simple. Authorization process should just require user uh, users physical intervention. For example, entering PIN, yes, pressing some kind of button. So generally, this device is not good for transaction authorization. The better cho choice would be uh, external PIN pad or devices like Fido used by Google. Yeah, for us, uh, Google Key, I think, is name. Yes, when user has to press this button to do anything, physically press something. Yes. Okay, so that was the, just the quick uh, uh, few few uh, vulnerabilities and uh, some requirements. Uh, so uh, nowadays I am working for. Uh, I am trying to put together all requirements or recommendations and in form of first uh, ASVS uh, checklist. So this is the example, but I have to work some uh, for these sentences to be self-explanatory, but I think it will be augmented by some kind of examples how to use it and stuff like that to better understand. And uh, I also want to uh, put some kind of cheat sheet for implementers, for developers, how to implement it uh, properly. Uh, maybe in the future some kind of examples uh, uh, for testing guide or code review guide. And of course, if, if any of you can help, any help is appreciated. And uh, if you are interesting, uh, interested in this topic, let me know. Leave me your uh, visit card, uh, business card, and, uh, and I will send you, I think, in two or three weeks, a beta version of this cheat sheet for review. Okay? So we have some time left, so I have one extra. Uh, do, do you know about uh, Facebook uh, fraud from last week? <coughs> Anyone? Yeah. Uh, the problem was that uh, Facebook was is implementing successfully a uh, uh, mobile application, uh, which is the, actually the payment system. You can pay at Starbucks using using. Uh, uh, using your mobile device and mobile application, just tapping, yeah, and uh, and this application has a, a top-up functionality because it's an electronic purse, and uh, this application can take uh, from your account any small amount of money to top up the application. And the problem was that uh, hackers uh, tried to still use the user password or use common passwords to check if it is valid for this application. And next, as it's written, uh, yeah, uh, ah, uh, and user at Starbucks uh, concard has sent a verification code to their email address which they must enter before the transfer is complete because this application was used only uh, not also for paying for a coffee but also to transfer a small amount of money between the users. Yes, and uh, this transaction between user uh, was authenticated user using uh, authentication code sent by email. Yes, but hacker with control of the Starbucks account can simply change the email address used for the verification code. Yeah. So what was the problem and what is the remediation? Anyone? Exactly. Or rather, this operation of change of authorization credentials, because email is an authorization credential in this, in this case, should be authorized to using code sent to old email address. So, so that's all from me. 
Excuse me? Maybe, but uh, email is effective in times of... Uh, I understand Starbucks in this case because if they will implement uh, SMS codes, SMS costs money, and this is just the small transactions. Yes, so email from their perspective is much better. Mm -hmm. So that's all from me. Do you have any questions? Yes, can you use the mic? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you have talked a lot about uh, authorization. How about authentication? Uh -huh. Some banks, if they have strong authentication, actually uh, don't use strong authorization. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, a lot of bankers are using also these external devices or SMS calls or other stuff to uh, authorize users too, but I wanted to concentrate just only on this function, so maybe next year <laughs> I'll share some. Because, for example, in Poland, uh, we, a common, common method to authorize a user is to use login and so-called masked password. I hate this mechanism because uh, you have to choose five, seven, eight, and twelfth letter from your password. <laughs> so what, you, what user are doing? <laughs> right, right in, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's just an example of bad uh, user experience. Anyone? If you don't have questions, then thank you. And contact me on Twitter or on email if you want to help with this small project or you, you want to receive a better version of a checklist uh, cheat sheet. Okay, thanks.